Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Oxhorn, and I am thrilled to share with you an amazing mod that just came up recently called Sim Settlements by Kinggath. This mod completely revolutionizes the way that you build settlements in Fallout 4. Instead of manually crafting houses and beds and buildings all by yourself, this mod allows you to create plots. Settlers will then assign themselves to the plots and build on those plots. They will build their own houses, they will plant their own crops, they will assign themselves their own jobs without you having to intervene. The most astounding part of this mod, in my opinion, is how different each structure is. He has created a variety of different houses that are each decorated completely uniquely. As time goes on in your settlements, your settlers will upgrade their own homes, adding more rooms, getting new furniture, putting furnishings on the walls, <laughs> and each time you visit the settlement, decorations in those houses have been moved around just like someone really lived there. Food that you saw laying out before will have been eaten. Objects that you saw tucked in a corner will be organized on shelves. The mod author King Gath wanted to make this an incredibly immersive mod. He wanted you to look forward to going back to your settlements and visiting your settlers just to see what they had done to their settlement. It has advanced features as well. You can collect taxes from your settlers. You can choose between different taxing types. It's an incredibly in-depth mod with a lot of room for customization so that you can get the settlement gameplay that you've always wanted in Fallout 4. This is such an astounding mod that I've seen some commenters say that this isn't just a mod, it's a full-out feature. Some have said that this is the way the settlement system should have been in Fallout 4 and I am inclined to agree. So let me give you a tour of how this mod works. Here we are in the Sunshine Tidings co-op. I set this settlement up in preparation for this mod because I wanna show off how some of the features work. As you can see, I've got 13 settlers, but absolutely no food and no beds. We're gonna take care of that with this mod. But I have plenty of defense. See my defense tower stacked up there. 243 defense. I've got plenty of power and I've got plenty of water over there in the corners. I've set up a bunch of scaffolding because I want to plot out exactly where the residential sections are going and where the agricultural sections are going, as well as where the centers of trade will be. And this is something that I recommend you do. The way this mod works is you set down a plot. Each plot takes up a pretty large square, so in smaller settlements, you're only gonna be able to put down a handful of plots, and in larger settlements like this one, you can easily mismanage the space that you have unless you plan ahead. So over here, I've got a residential section all plotted out and, I, and we will build it together. First things first, let me introduce you to the City Manager 2078 holotape. You find this holotape in the Museum of Freedom in Concord along with a bunch of ASAM sensors. Or you can send it to your inventory using console commands. This holotape allows you to have fine-tuned control over all of the different settings for this mod, including zoning laws, tax laws, and notifications that you get. We'll tackle this in a minute, but first I want to start building. To do so, we need to build some ASAM sensors. So, uh, the way this works is you go on over to a chemistry station like this, go to utility, and then down here we're going to find ASAM sensor 2077 model. You have to build one of these for each of the plots in your settlement. I plan to build six farms, six shops, one scrapyard, and 13 houses. So I'm going to need 26 of these. The lore behind these is that the ASAM sensors basically plot out the land, showing you where you have room to build. That's the way I imagine that it's supposed to work. The first thing we want to build are some agricultural plots. The new plots that we get with Sim Settlement appear in the special category, and here we go. These green tiles are the agricultural plots, and what we're gonna do is I'm going to put these in this little farmland area, and I want six of them. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. Now here's the beauty of these agricultural plots. They fade into view. The game automatically assigns a settler to each of the agricultural plots. The settlers will then start farming automatically. Did you see that notification in the top left-hand corner? It said that a citizen has been assigned to one of these agricultural plots. Now, food works differently with this mod than it does in Vanilla Fallout 4. Each of these plots only generates two food, and each plot requires one settler. So, whereas in Fallout 4, each settler can farm a maximum of six food, with this mod, each settler can farm a maximum of two food. This means that you need more settlers to produce the same amount of food that you did before, but it also means that you're going to have much more busy settlers. All of your settlers are going to have a job to do. Look, see, they're already coming in, they've already started farming, and look at that. The crops appear right in the agricultural plots. It is such a great little touch and a wonderful animation. We can already see the benefit of our hard work, and look, we've, we haven't hardly had to do anything. We did not have to plant all of these crops. We didn't have to assign any settlers. We planted six of those plots, and we're already getting all of the food necessary for our settlement. So exciting! Now, one thing I forgot to mention is if you have another mod called the HUD Framework installed, you get a handy little settlement management heads-up display on the left-hand side to complement the one that comes in the game. Uh, notice that before I had zero food, and now my food monitor has gone almost all the way to the top. One of the goals of the mod is to increase the progress bars for all of the icons as far to the right as you can. It doesn't really work on numbers, it works just on getting those bars filled. I'm doing good on everything except for homes. We'll be taking care of that in a minute. But first I wanna show you the industrial plot. You have two options. One is flat on the ground and one has a concrete foundation. These industrial plots will generate scrap. And I wanna put this in a non-conspicuous area, in an inconspicuous area rather. So I'm gonna go back here and this can be my little workshop. I'm going to use the one that has a concrete foundation. Now, this one does require power, so I'm going to head on up over here. I have this set out and ready, and I'm going to wire it up with some electricity. Now, the sign says for rent, and in a moment, the game will auto-assign a settler to this industrial plot. There, did you see that? We got a notification in the left-hand side, and an animation has appeared. Scaffolding has been erected over this plot, and we're starting to see some scrap appear on the foundation. We can then watch the animation as the plot builds itself. And there we go, we get a not notification saying that the citizen has completed setting up this plot and we can now explore it. And look at all of this wonderful scrap and salvage that is on here. This is now generating scrap for our settlement. But more importantly, it's giving a settler a job. Notice that in the new HUD to the left, our job meter, which is the construction warning sign down there, right above happiness, has moved one to the right. So we've got a lot of our settlers working hard. Uh, hard working settlers are happy settlers. We've got farms, we've got a scrap yard. Now we need some houses. So here is where we're going to set up our houses. I have uh, some scaffolding set up so that I can snap to it and know exactly uh, what I want. So the first house we're going to build is going to be one of these wooden ones on a platform. Um, now you can use this. This is flat on the ground. Uh, the problem with these, just like all flat tiles in the game, is that the ground is very um, seldom level, which means that you're going to have rocks sticking up, the bushes sticking up in the middle of your floors, and sometimes it'll appear like it's floating, and we don't want that, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the residential plot wood, which looks like it's erected on top of a shack. So let's get rid of some of these. And there we go. Now, because it's uh, elevated, we need to put down some stairs. Let's grab this bad boy right here. 
And then let's wire it up with the electricity and watch it grow. Sign says for rent. Let's see if a settler rents the spot. And there we go. The game has assigned a settler to this spot. The for rent sign is gone. <clears throat> and you can see that the settler has begun building on top of the plot. Here's some scaffolding while the settler builds. And I'm actually going to get out of the way in case the settler decides to walk up these stairs. We can then watch the animation as the house builds itself in the background. When done, we get a notification that the settler has completed his or her home, and we can then go and explore it. And look at that! There's a mailbox right outside just for this settler. We can go on in here and look at all of these unique decorations that are going to be completely unique to just this house. There's a book on the counter over here. This is the humble little bed. Here are the some workshop uh, accessories. And then this is the settler's stash of food. The mod author says that he's basically created a backstory for each of these homes and the backstory is going to be told with the decorations that appear in the house. Some of these characters have colored pasts and we'll be able to deduce this as the settler decorates his or her house. So I'm going to go ahead and build the rest of my little houses here. I'll be right back. And there we go. I've gone around and built all of the houses and we can go on up and explore them. So here's the first one I put down uh, with its own unique decorations. And as you can see, the inside of this one is completely different. These guys are chomping on a death claw egg over here and their personal food is out there. And here's another one. This settler came on inside and is sitting down uh, relaxing. Uh, this one is also munching on a death claw egg, but the interior is completely different with some unique personal uh, uh, doodads up there. Here's a little metal shack. And uh, they've got their own personal decorations. Look, this guy's eating a, a, t a tomato. And then I went over here and built another residential area. Remember, I had to build a house for each settler. So that's a total of 13 houses. I, I built some over there. Looks like they're still being built. And we've got a new shack. The settler is inside her home, enjoying her leisure time. Here's a completely different... Oh, looks like I built into the rocks over there. My bad. I'll have to fix that later. Yep, I built these too low to the ground. I'll go back and fix that another time. But this one's really neat. This is a unique shack. It's a little trailer. Come on in here and they've got a toilet for a seat and a bed on down there. Now, as I said earlier, these shacks can upgrade. All of those are tier level one version of the shack. And these appear to be a higher tier, uh, which I built over here. This is a multi-story shack and you can climb up the stairs to view this settler's unique decorations. They've got a, a little oven over here, looks like some traveling gear, uh, more food over here. And then here's a similar shack, but uh, the decorations are completely different. A different meal is set out, looks like a death claw steak and some tomatoes. They also have a traveler pack. And then over here, again, here's the, the death claw steak and tomatoes, but over here is, it's a different setup. We've got a clipboard and some food down there. Now let's say you need to uh, move one of these homes because you made a mistake. Look, I made a mistake here. I built this one into this house and uh, it's kind of hovering over here. You can fix that easily and watch this fun animation. Scrap it. <laughs> yes, I would like to scrap it. And it just disappears in front of your very eyes. There it goes again. Now, we need some shops. I'm going to put some shops against this shack over here. And I elevated uh, these scaffolding pieces over here to put them above the rocks and the bushes over here. So we're going to scrap these and build ourselves some shops. Shop number one, let's wire that with electricity. And put down a stair. 
Then, just like with the houses, we can watch this one get an uh, occupant. It'll be automatically assigned just like that. It no longer says for rent, and it builds itself. And it looks like I got a weapon shop, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a big bin of tools and uh, machinery out here. Looks like a forge. And then inside is the actual shop. There's a weapons workbench and then uh, a nice array of weaponry stacked behind. The settler will eventually come on up here and man her shop. Look at the sign. No caps, no service. Dead end weapons. I love it. So he's got a unique shop like this for each of the major shops in the game. And uh, he's got it set up so that you're not going to get a duplicate weapon shop until at least one of the others has been built. In this way, you don't accidentally get a whole bunch of weapon shops. I'm going to go ahead and build all of the others, and then we can explore them together. And here we go. And I have a nice little um, bazaar over here now. Residential over there. And then these are the new shops. So I already showed you... The Dead End Weapons, let's come on up here, and this is a general goods merchant. Uh, looks like we've got a nice little counter over here with some uh, food over there. And uh, over here, we've got a Secura Stop. Let's check, I bet that's a um, an, an armor merchant. Yeah, check it out, there's an armor workbench in here. An armor display stand. This is where the settler will stand when, uh, when he or she is selling armor. And then there's decorations on the wall. And uh, then over here, let's see. What is this? A No ghouls. I guess it's a bar. No ghouls. <laughs> I'm hoping that's feral ghouls because I know there are some ghoul settlers. And yeah, it looks like it's a bar. There's a bar in here with refrigeration back there and some food storage. And then I made two shops over here. One is the tailor and one is the clinic. I really like the layout of this tailor. We come around to the side and uh, there's where she hangs her clothing. This is where you can come around to get measured for alterations. And then a big box of clothes and boots and goods. And then here's the other shop. If I can get around. Uh, this is the medic. Coming on in here and look, a chemistry station, all sorts of herbs and doodads, and a cooking station. So let's talk a little bit about some of these settings. The zoning laws are the settings that you can uh, choose to make the greatest impact on your game. This is where you can choose some of the visual effects and immersive choices that come with the mod. Provide extra utilities. I had this turned off. And I believe what this does is uh, some of your settlers may consume more electricity. If they consume more than the other settlers, they generate more taxes. If you turn it off, they go back to uh, providing the same taxes as everyone else. Initial plot costs, you can turn this on or off. If you turn it on, then it means that when you build items in your settlement, that they have a greater cost. When I built these, all I needed was the ASM sensor. But you can turn this on so that when you build the plots, they require more supplies, like fertilizer for the farms and wood for some of the houses. Regular inspections controls how fast settlers build their houses. You saw in this video that I would build a plot, and within a matter of moments, the settlers would build a tier one shack. Well, if you turn this on, then uh, b basically these will grow more slowly over time. You can go and do a quest, come back, and the settler will have just gotten a little bit of scrap together, and um, they're just now starting to work on the settlement. If you turn it off, then they build them right before your very eyes, like I showed you. Auto assignment is self-explanatory. If you turn it on, then the game will pick settlers that are unassigned and uh, assign them to some of your plots. I recommend you leave this on. It's gonna make things much less hassle for you. Jobs required is interesting. This is another little immersive uh, detail that he added. If you turn this on, then a citizen is required to first have a job before he can be assigned to a house. So you'd have to, uh, when you get the new settler, that settler would be auto-assigned to a farm or to a shop, and only then, if there was a free house available, would he be assigned to a house. I have it turned off just because 
Um, I wanted my settlers to be able to automatically enter a house, even if they didn't have a job. And personal inspection is really for your benefit. Um, as I told you earlier, as you go through the game, the houses will upgrade from tier one to tier two to tier three as the settlement becomes happier and as, as trade begins to pick up, as it starts to produce an abundance of food, then the settlers will improve their own homes. They're committing to the settlement. This option requires that you personally show up to inspect the tier one house, for example, before they are free to build a tier two house. Then before they build a tier two house, you have to show up to inspect the tier two house, to observe it, before they will then move on to build tier three. This is good to leave on if you really want to see the slow progress of your settlement. If you want to see the houses go from ramshackle shacks to more elaborate houses slowly, then turn this on. And if you don't care about that and you just want to see the best houses as soon as they're available, based on the other qualifiers in the game, then turn it off. The second option is where you can configure the tax laws so your settlers will generate taxes, which appear as bottle caps in your workstation. The tax cycle is every three days. Uh, that's the default setting, but you can choose uh, fewer days, go down to two, or you can go every five days weekly. There are a lot of different options, and uh, the mod author is open to changing these based on user feedback. So if you have, if you have an opinion, uh, leave a comment on his mod page. And you can uh, create custom tax rates for each of the different jobs that go on in your settlement. For example, you could tax an industrial section um, maybe half of the normal rate, and then a shop, which has more caps coming in, maybe double the normal rate. You can adjust these based on your personal preference. And the options are standard, half, no tax, or a double tax. Again, he'll, he'll change these if enough people ask for it. The software settings, there's only one option right now, and that's the Citizen's Needs HUD. That's the left-hand uh, heads-up display that we saw. You can turn it off or on if you want. The help section is a immersive uh, tutorial guide. Basically, uh, you can either read these different help documents, which are written from the voice of a pre-war city manager, which is really entertaining, or you can view his uh, videos on his YouTube channel. A lot of, a lot of his tutorial videos go really in-depth. The ASAM sensor info, you need to uh, choose this when you first install the mod. Follow the mod author's installation instructions to learn how that is used. And then set up notifications, basically controls the notifications that appear over here in the top left-hand corner of the screen when something happens. Um, if you feel like it's a little bit too spammy, you don't really need to be notified every single time a settler completes a house, for example. You can turn these on or off. Speaking of taxes, uh, you saw me set the tax day to three days. Let's uh, check our workshop, make sure there's no caps here. And it would show up in the miscellaneous section, so no, there are no caps here. Let's uh, fast travel to Far Harbor and wait three days and then come on back. You ain't on. You ain't long for this and there it is in the upper left hand corner. We got our taxes. The notification went by pretty quickly. <clears throat> but uh, it said eight dollars. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, the settlement and see what we got. And <clears throat> eight bottle caps. Okay, <laughs> so it does collect taxes. Uh, not a whole lot, but it was only three days. Remember that. So there you go. That is Sim Settlements. And I gotta say, what I think I love most about this mod is just the attention to the daily lives of these settlers. Look, they go in and out of their own homes. They spend their free time sitting in chairs outside their homes. You know, you'll uh, use the traditional settlement crafting system to build these elaborate settlements for settlers. And even if you assign them to the right bed, they sometimes don't use it. Looks like uh, Hancock is the tailor. Looks like he was auto assigned to be the tailor over here. Um, so yeah, each of these houses tells a different story. It gives, helps give each of these settlers a brand new personality, a unique personality. And uh, look, here we go. We got a Minuteman setting up shop. Let's see if she works. If you're looking for armor, I may have something you can use. Let's see what you got. Great. And look at that. Wonderful. A perfectly functioning armor station in a lovely little shanty. 
Uh, so there you go. I, I, I gotta say, I'm absolutely blown away by this mod, the attention to detail that he put into it, and how much he cares about just the idiosyncrasies of real people living in real settlements. It's gonna make my gameplay so much more fun. Oh! I had never seen that before! Uh, <laughs> for, sorry, for a moment there, for a moment there I thought my settlers turned into these... <laughs> <laughs> these mannequins! Oh, they're scarecrows! I get it! Okay, so these are like tier two garden plots. See, look at this. I'm learning. I'm learning something about these. Uh, I'm learning something about this mod uh, myself. So the the tier two or tier three garden plots come with these wonderful little scarecrows. <laughs> God, God, uh, honestly, it kind of fr uh, freaked me out a little bit when I came in here. Uh, so great! It, that means that more than just the houses upgrade. It looks like the garden plots upgrade as well as these houses. This is one of those tier 2 or tier 3 houses. So, uh, very cool. If you want to download this mod, Sim Settlements, do check the description of this video. I link to the mod in the description where you can download it for your own game. And do check out the mod author's tutorials on his YouTube channel. They come in really handy. I, I watched every single one of them when I was learning how to use this mod, and I encourage you to do the same. I link to his YouTube channel in the description as well, so head on over there, uh, subscribe to him if you're interested in what he does, and watch his tutorial videos. If you like this mod overview and you would love to see more stuff like it, be sure to subscribe. I publish a brand new video every single day of the week and sometimes I do mods and sometimes I do lore. Be sure to subscribe to get notified of what I publish next. And if you'd like to join the Oxhorn community on Discord, check out the invitation link in the description of this video. We have a nice little community on Discord and the invitation link will get you right in. So be sure to click on that. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.